This is a presentation of Universal 7 Governance and Management. Requisite Variety with Beer Stafford Beer has said, I consider this law stands in the same relation to management as the law of gravity stands to Newtonian physics. Do you remember the very first scene from Space Odyssey 2000? A primate human ancestor hurls a bone. Flying into the air? What happens next? The bone, a symbol for a tool newly discovered. turns into a gigantic space station, thereby symbolizing the technological evolution of mankind. What the ape in Space Odyssey 2001 had experienced without realizing it, did not get a name, until the British cybernetician Ross Ashby gave it one, in the 1960s. The ape probably thought, with a little help of my strong arm, this massive bone can get me lunch. Ashby would agree, but would not be thinking of the bone or the space station. Instead, that massive bone has requisite variety to do that. The most important tools that cybernetics created are not computers or microchips, but thinking tools for dealing with highly complex systems. The men above did this. The idea of system, the idea of black box, feedback, of inputs and outputs, recursive structures, and bits and bytes. And of course, the very powerful cybernetic idea just mentioned, requisite variety. Studying to become an attorney, and an MBA, I never heard of requisite variety. Today, I know what it means. I consider myself a cybernetician, for knowing this, and for being able to explain it, and making it easy to understand. I also learned, that bundling attorney, manager and cybernetician, makes a lot of sense. On the one hand, you know about control in a human society, and goal-getting in business. On the other hand, you know about the laws of control, and purposeful activity, that apply universally. Law, if you think of a legal system, is applied cybernetics. So is management. Stafford Beer said so, and I have experienced this myself. Four simple words, only variety absorbs variety. That is all that it takes, to describe one of the most powerful laws in the universe. Everything that has a purpose, is regulated by this universal law of control. It applies everywhere, and at all times. If you want to achieve something, if you want things to work as they should, then you have to follow, what is also called Ashby's law, in honor of the cybernetician who discovered it. So what does requisite variety mean? It is appropriate, to call the natural attribute of systems that guarantee their self-regulatory powers, the law of requisite variety, Aspie's law. I consider this law stands in the same relation to management as the law of gravity stands to Newtonian physics. And it is just as impossible to repeal the one law as the other. Thus both laws inevitably assert themselves, and may not be disobeyed. Equivalent variety in the regulator with respect to the variety of the black or muddy box regulated is required. It is not required by UK's, by democratic decision, by the manager, or by me, it is required by nature, in the sense that this is how things are. Control can be obtained, only if the variety of the controller, is at least as great as, the variety of the situation to be controlled. This is, like all profound statements of natural law. Readers will say, all this is entirely obvious. Of course it is obvious, with hindsight. Besides, if the law of requisite variety is a truism, how is it that we try to disobey it all the time? And how is it, that although this disobedience, causes us to fail in our task of control, we still do not recognize what has gone wrong. Every brick laid, has a bricklayer. 
then it is inherent in this situation, that one lot of variety, the bricklayer's capabilities to take any one brick and lay it, absorbs the other lot of variety, the zillions of mathematically theoretical possible bricklaying arrangements. We see exactly the same phenomenon, in team games, where pairs of players contain variety, possible moves, by marking each other. All the bricks are there, not one more, not one less. It is an astonishing fact of nature, that the glass falls to the floor when I drop it. We know, of course, that the apple, when dropped from the tree, falls onto Newton's head. It is also an astonishing fact of nature, that not even one more or one less brick that is needed, happens to be laid in the building project. To comprehend either situation, involves the perception of an attribute of nature, something that infallibly occurs, in circumstances that can be generally defined, within the limits of a state of knowledge, and experience. The gravity example is familiar, the bricklaying example is not. By aeronautical engineering, an aeroplane appears to resist gravity, in the short run. But we know, that this is done at a price, in the expenditure of energy. So, by variety engineering, requisite variety can be pumped, into a management system, that does not have it inherently. Again, this is done at a price, the expenditure of information. The boss may perfectly well hear, and perfectly well understand, the words he hears. But if those words, are attempting to draw a distinction that he cannot recognize, then the transduction lacks requisite variety. But what of the managers, steersmen all, who practice cybernetics as their profession? They have mostly not heard of it yet, the law of requisite variety. The potential use of the variety measure, is not the naive use of counting states, but of matching state generators. We do not count out, the variety of the player in a game, but we do rely, on his generating as much variety, as his opposite number. We typically say, that the two sides, were evenly matched. We can soon think of other examples, whereby antithetical sets of variety generators, absorb each other's variety, or at least, tend to do so, within some statistical variation. In nature itself, exploding populations of insects, have their variety absorbed by predators, which, then, have their own explosive variety absorbed. All problems, whether they are regarded as problems of recognition, or classification, or indeed decision, are problems about uncertainty. And Ashby puts it this way, solving a problem, is in great measure and perhaps totally, a matter of appropriate selection. Now we focus briefly, on requisite variety in the law. Requisite variety wins easily as the final and most cherished goal of any legal system. The scale held by Themis, is a symbol of requisite variety equilibrium. You also find it, in this Roman jurist, Ulpiano's definition of justice. Justice is the firm and continuous will to give each one his own. Nevertheless, the legal system, regardless of how many laws it passes, will never have enough requisite variety, to settle every case brought before a judge and jury. Here is when hermeneutics, or legal interpretation, enters the variety equation in order for the law to regain control. Here is an example from my law school, a train station in Vienna had a sign that said no dogs allowed. A man enters the station with a bear on a leash. Does the word dog include bears? The judge said yes. The variety of life is always greater than the lower variety hypothesis considered in the law. Back then, dog meant danger, or a mess. The bear at least the same, or worse. In a civil suit, which of two opposing lawyers is more likely to win a case? the one that has more requisite variety. He can identify more subtle differences in a case, 
and find a solution where the other is not likely to search for. Solving a problem is in great measure and perhaps totally, a matter of appropriate selection. Requisite Variety in the Economy Requisite variety is an abstraction with an enormous coverage, for instance. There is no great difficulty, however, in finding examples of attempted control systems which disobey this law, of requisite variety, quite flagrantly, and therefore do not succeed. From traffic control, to the control of the national economy. If handling a requisite variety, calls for an equation, and if it calls for inserting attenuators, and amplifiers, on the proper sides of the equation, then there has to be some agreement about the nature, function, and purposes of the system, that proposes variety equations on every side. But these are, subjective judgments. The reason why, the senior economic ministers fail to control the economy, is that the minimal lending rate, together with the other regulators they use, does not have requisite variety, to intervene in a system, that no one has defined or understood. What is far worse, everyone is acting as if, such a problem as inflation, could be accounted for in terms of economics at all. But inflation, is a phenomenon of the total societary system. Economics itself, does not have requisite variety to handle the proliferation of variety involved in that. Look all around you, and everything you see has requisite variety incorporated to a certain degree. Look at the keyboard of your computer. The size of the clothes you wear. The size of the door. The height of the ceiling. The intensity of the light in your room. The world is designed, with requisite variety looming inside the head of the designers of stuff. Requisite variety is everywhere, almost all the time. Unfortunately, some people are too tall, or too obese, to fit in an airplane seat. Averages, like those used in making clothes are the enemies of requisite variety. That blue shirt does not look like it is custom made. Providing spontaneous requisite variety, can get a self-organizing system going. In Mexico City, drawing lines in the subway station floor, created spontaneous order, and reduced the hassle of exiting, and boarding the trains. Instead of having somebody ordering people to do this, the yellow arrows on the floor of the station, did the job on their own. Marketing campaigns are about finding requisite variety. When you read, open 24-7. That is requisite variety. Getting your product delivered on time. That is requisite variety in a service. Getting something in exactly the color, the size, the style you want. That is a product with requisite variety. We have gone from AM radio, to FM radio. From hi-fi sound, to digital sound. From the cathode ray tubes, to a 4K screen. And Batman, from Kapow, to special effects. We want, all the requisite variety we can get. Requisite Variety in Everyday Life Archimedes once said, Give me a lever, a place to stand, and I will move the world. There are many popular sayings, that reflect the veracity of this law, for instance, finding a needle in a haystack, or, a round peg, will not go into a square hole. I am sure, you can find many more. As a consequence of the law of requisite variety, the Conant Ashby theorem says, that every good regulator must contain a model of the system being regulated. The best example ever, of the theorem, is the home thermostat. Engineers had a model, of the range of temperature outside the home, and how it affected the internal temperature. The room temperature is compared to the ideal setting, and the difference is the feedback signal that will turn the air conditioning on or off. Does a vaccine have requisite variety against a virus? Not really. The virus can mutate, over and over again. A vaccine gets developed at a slower pace. Conquering a virus is a requisite variety game, a numbers game. Maybe the coronavirus will find a niche in the Omicron variant and stay there for a long time. One thing is for certain, 
those who unleash the virus into the world, are not the ones who will help us get rid of it. Now let's turn to requisite variety, and business. These sharks frequently ask, how is your product different from others? Variety. How has the world been providing variety? In the beginning of the industrial revolution, everybody bought what the factories produced. There was no choice, no variety was offered. Today, management becomes a game of providing just the exact amount of variety needed, and no more. It is an optimization challenge. Variety costs money, but even so, the amount of choices in the number of products has grown exponentially. With Amazon, you have literally millions of products to choose from, a click away. Compare how these different business solutions absorb the variety found in their immediate surroundings. Low variety, high variety. Compare what the two steering wheels and dashboards can do, how much variety each one is designed to handle. Requisite variety, appears as management is forced to go, from dealing with material things and energy, to information. The management of information, has very different rules from managing the four is you cannot be redundant in materials and energy. However, in matters of information, Redundancy is good, because in general, managing information is cheaper than moving stuff around. For instance, you cannot afford not having a phone on hand. Transportation and communications were separated forever. Requisite variety has to do with this shift, from matter and energy, to information. From Newton, to Wiener, Ashby, and Beer. From nuts and bolts, to using information theory and computer programming. Requisite variety for the police. If a citizen begins to proliferate his social variety in a criminal fashion, we say that he is breaking the law. There is nothing in the promulgation of the law to contain this variety generation. Therefore society has a countervailing variety generator known as law enforcement. Hence if a policeman apprehends the criminal, the felonious variety is contained, otherwise not. And there are many criminals who get away with it. There does not have to be a policeman for every potential criminal, and there is not. That is exactly why most felons are not apprehended. The criminal variety of society is greater than the law enforcement variety. Every football player has a marker, and every prey has its predator. But every citizen does not have his own personal policeman. If he did, the law would never be broken. As was said earlier, it is not a matter of counting possible states, but of matching them. The police cannot generate sufficient variety to monitor continuously the behavior of every citizen. There is a shortcoming in requisite variety that we have already learned is not to be measured by counting all possible states of citizens, and subtracting, all possible states of policemen. If we instead, match one set of variety generators, against the other, the lack of requisite variety, can be found, by dividing the number of citizens, by the number of policemen. Suppose that this number is 500. Then, it follows that the cost of meeting requisite variety, will be that of providing a 500-fold increase, in the capacity of the police system, to generate variety. This is done, by collecting records, and fingerprints, and photographs, by spending money on storage, comparison, and retrieval, by making information sources, cover a wider front, through the provision of cars, radios and informers, and so on. All these facilities, normally viewed through their respective technologies, as evidentially different, may instead be viewed, equivalently, as variety amplifiers. It becomes clear, that the set of facilities, should be designed as a total system, 
so that the varieties of the component facilities tend to be multiplicative, rather than just additive. Surely, no authority would provide a fleet of police cars, and fail to equip them with radios. Very well, then the mobility and the communication varieties, will indeed interact. But because the general perception of the variety amplifier is missing, among the general citizenry, and because the criterion of requisite variety, is not acknowledged, in the design of the police system, the net result is necessarily inefficient. The implications of Ashby's law have not been worked out. Besides, the police activity, is no more than a subsystem of some larger system, that includes punishment and correction. In the total criminological scene, the attempts to disobey Ashby's law, fail to the extent that the penal subsystem, becomes a training machine for felons. This is well known, because of the measured rate of recidivism, but no one examines the cybernetics of the total system, looking for the entailments of the law of requisite variety. Contemplate the solitary policeman, trying unsuccessfully to sort out a ramified traffic jam, through a network of roads. He fails, because he does not have requisite variety. When the jam eventually clears, by the way, it is because the residual variety required, has been supplied by the motorist themselves, in their efforts to escape. The interaction of the subsystems, criminality and law and order, can certainly be described as a self-vetoing homeostat. Suppose that every briefing meeting, of a group of intending criminals, were actually attended by a policeman. Then it is obvious, that the police force would deploy themselves to catch the criminals, in the act of committing the crime, and the chances of committing a successful crime, would be precisely nil. Requisite Variety Against the Police As you can tell, there are two ways to meet the law of requisite variety. Public security is no exception. You reduce to zero the perturbance variety, or you increase the control variety, at whatever level is needed, to counteract any perturbance in as real time as possible. In public safety, this means that crime does not pay, and that effective police action and punishments, dissuade all criminal activity. So, can, defunding the police, meet the law of requisite variety? Yes, but for that to happen, you need any of these three things to happen. All citizens have to be saints, citizens have to police each other perfectly. Give every law-abiding citizen, and every store owner, a badge and a weapon, to defend him or herself, to stop criminals in real time. How to subvert law and order. Attack the police, accuse them of being fascist or racist. Paint the protesters as victims. Condone criminal activity as normal, expected or justified. Use high gain amplifiers, such as the media to endorse the attacks. How to subvert law and order There are two main ways to deceive. 1. Hide the truth, means hide perturbance variety. Means, not showing the riots and the looting on national television. Or showing them, but justifying them as normal, or expected behavior. Claim a bigger injustice is being settled. 2. Show the false, means show false control variety in action police doing nothing while the riots and the looting are happening in front of them. Blaming and giving more importance to other lesser crimes, for instance crimes committed by whites. Requisite variety, is an equation. Here is a graphical representation of the requisite variety equation applied to support the police. To obtain requisite variety, the control variety has to be equal to the perturbance variety, or another way of saying it is this, the perturbance variety, minus the control variety equals zero. Let's start at a point of equilibrium, where police actions have just enough requisite variety to stop a certain amount criminal activity. 
the residual variety is zero. Both criminal activity and police protection cost money to society, but people are willing to pay to neutralize criminal activity. On the top part, in blue, are the variety amplifiers that the police has available. On the bottom, in red, are the filters that inhibit or dissuade criminal activity from taking place. The assumption is that as this control loop goes around, criminal activity will decrease, in theory until extinction. Here is how the liberal media uses its own kind of variety amplifiers and attenuators or filters to destroy law and order. Yes, requisite variety can be not only a useful tool, but also a weapon. Requisite variety and computers. Stafford is very convincing because he makes it obvious when he explains the pros and cons of computers in terms of requisite variety for their power to amplify or attenuate variety. He does this in his book Designing Freedom. The argument is simple. Computers can be variety amplifiers or variety attenuators as they can identify complex patterns. If you place a computer to generate loads of information that cannot be digested or analyzed by its user, then the computer is a threat, not a blessing. He explains. Assuming that the regulator has the smaller variety, there are only two ways of meeting the demand of Ashby's law. One is to attenuate variety in the system, the other is to amplify variety in the regulator. Examination of institutional systems often reveals that the attenuators and the amplifiers have been installed in the wrong loops, on the wrong side, of the variety equation. Just think, what phone companies do, when they bombard you with dozens of different offers. Think of the bots, and the junk mail. Think of unsolicited offers. Think of the call centers. All these businesses, are putting computers, on the wrong side of the control equation, against you. Managers who do not know what computers can do in terms of handling variety, can end up using them in exactly the wrong way. Instead of being an instrument of liberation, they become instruments of oppression. Requisite Variety, Driver of Human Transcendence Requisite variety, is what we search for, in everything we do. Every time we want to reach some goal, or want to solve a problem, what we are really hoping for, is requisite variety. We want to match what we want and work for, with what we get, not more, not less. Requisite variety, is so powerful a concept, that you can reinterpret human history, in terms of a never-ending search for requisite variety. An artist researched what Alexander the Great could have looked like. The history of science, especially, astronomy, physics, chemistry and so on all the way to quantum mechanics. The universe has requisite variety. We know because it computes itself constantly, and we are part of that evolution. Every time a wave breaks in the ocean. Every time, a bird, builds its nest. As we observe, the perfect balance of nature, and notice how every continent, keeps rearranging the face of our planet Earth. The idea of God, has pushed human knowledge forward, whether you believe in God or not. The Catholic Church, was a key player in creating Western civilization, which in turn has given us the miracle of modern science, the wealth of free market economies, the security of the rule of law, a unique sense of human rights and freedom, charity as a virtue, splendid art and music, a philosophy grounded in reason, and innumerable other gifts that we take for granted, as the wealthiest and most powerful civilization in history. Human history can be explained as man's search for God. As we go forward we acquire more and more requisite variety as a species.
whether we focus on our most insignificant chores, or on the sublime notion of searching for the mind of God, as Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking did, requisite variety is what we're all wishing for. The mind of God, is of course, a metaphor for understanding the secrets of the universe. While we search, we cannot deny, that the universe has shown requisite variety, to produce us humans. We do not know, if we have requisite variety to keep ourselves alive as a species. For Christians, God possesses these three attributes, omniscience, all-knowing, omnipotence, all-powerful, and omnibenevolence, supremely good. God knows everything, has the power to do anything, and is perfectly good. And man was built to his image. As a cybernetician, I can offer this added description, God, has absolute requisite variety. He controls everything, because everything he does, has the correct amount of information, to be what it is, in the way he wanted it, not more, not less. Love has requisite variety, hate does not. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked this presentation and exchange your views with others.